Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, on Monday morning in May, an 18-year-old high school student walked onto a neighborhood street in my state in Farmington, New Mexico. He was wearing a modified bulletproof vest, heavily armed with multiple pistols and an AR-15 style semi-automatic gas-operated rifle. Starting at 10.56 a.m., he began firing at nearby homes and passing vehicles. Uh, law enforcement responded to the scene within minutes, engaged the shooter, and ultimately killed him around 11.05. We'll get the logistics right here in a moment. Let's try that. There we go. Great. In that brief 10 minutes of time, the shooter fired off 150 rounds, hit at least seven homes and 11 vehicles. He killed a 97-year-old woman, Gwendolyn Schofield. He also uh, killed her 73-year-old daughter, Melody Ivy, and 79-year-old Shirley Voita. He also injured six other people, including two law enforcement officers who were responding. In 2023, our nation has experienced roughly two mass shootings a day. Let that sink in for a moment. Each of these shootings has had an, a devastating impact on an American community and the families of the victims involved. It's difficult to believe that next week will actually mark 11 years since we lost 20 school children and six staff members at Sandy Hook Elementary School. 11 years. From Aztec and Farmington to Las Vegas, Nevada, Parkland, Florida, Pittsburgh, Aurora, Uvalde, and most recently Lewiston, the number of Americans killed in mass shootings has been horrific. And we cannot bring those Americans back, but we can pass common sense gun safety measures that can save lives and spare some families at least from this loss. My gas-operated semi-automatic firearms exclusion or GoSafe Act would regulate the most inherently dangerous and unusual firearms and mechanisms that mass shooters have wielded time and again against our community. The GoSafe Act draws a bright line between traditional firearms used for hunting, sporting, and self-defense and the weapons so common in these mass shootings. I first started working on this legislation back in 2017 after the Las Vegas shooting. And I believed it was important for me to be part of a solution, both as a gun owner and as an engineer who was familiar, and let's face it, I've shot many of these weapons. Someone who was familiar with the mechanisms that make some firearms so inherently dangerous and destructive. I focused on those mechanics rather than on cosmetic features that individuals or even manufacturers can quickly modify. These mechanisms are what allow civilian mass shooters to walk into public spaces, destroy human life at an incredible pace, and sometimes even outgun law enforcement. This includes the gas-operated actions that make assault rifle, uh, rifles or AR-15 so dangerous, detachable high-capacity magazines, self-manufactured ghost guns, and conversion devices like bump stocks and Glock switches. Like a lot of Americans, and many of my constituents, frankly, in New Mexico, I'm a gun owner and I have been for most of my life. Many of my best memories involve the responsible law-abiding use of firearms to fill my freezer and feed my friends and family. But I also firmly believe that our families and children should feel safe when they go to their local bowling alley, enter their classroom, go to a place of worship. And I have seen firsthand the impact that endless lockdowns and sh active shooter drills have on our kids. As lawmakers, we should be able to draw a line between traditional firearms used for hunting, sport, and self-defense and these weapons of war designed to take human life. We should heed the calls of the young people and their parents who have demanded that Congress take meaningful action. These folks have not given up on Congress, and we in Congress have a duty. I refuse to believe that we can't find a meaningful path forward and one that is constitutional to re reduce gun violence. 
It's why last year after the tragedy at Uvalde, I was proud to play a leading role in negotiating the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. And I was particularly proud to partner with my Republican colleagues to secure two key provisions that made firearms trafficking and straw purchases criminal offenses punishable by up to 15 years in prison. We proved that it's possible to find some agreement on measures that help protect our communities from gun violence while simultaneously safeguarding the Second Amendment. But we need to do more. We need to take on the dangerous firearms and the mechanisms that are fueling our nation's skyrocketing rise in mass shootings. I was incredibly par uh, proud to partner with my friend, my colleague, Senator Angus King on this legislation. Uh, Senator King could not be with us here today, but I want to thank him very much for that partnership. And I know what he's been through in recent weeks. Um, I'm also proud to partner with my friend, Michael Bennett who has been a great supporter of this legislation. He's one of our key co-sponsors as we introduced. And he's a former educator and school superintendent. And I think that places him in a special category here in the Senate. So, Senator Bennett. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Heinrich. Um, I want to thank Senator Heinrich for his thoughtful leadership on this legislation in a, in a, in a place where uh, often uh, what you see is people chasing sound bites or, um, or, or just sort of spouting off on whatever's happening in the course of the day. Senator Heinrich takes a very different approach. I don't know if it's because of the state that you're from, that might be part of it, a neighbor to Colorado. I don't know if it's because you are an engineer unlike anybody else who's in the Senate. But I know he's been working hard on this legislation, as he said, for several years with people in New Mexico and around the country uh, who come to this issue with very different perspectives. And I think that also is why his leadership has been so critical. The first time I ever talked, Senator Martin ever talked to me about this legislation, I think was in 2017. And he has been working ever since then to, to perfect it, to gain the, uh, the insights of people. And I am grateful that no matter how hard it's been or difficult it's been, he hasn't given up. And I'm particularly grateful because of the state that I come from. For more than two decades, Colorado has grieved one incident of gun violence after another. The shooting at Columbine High School that left 13 people dead uh, occurred the year before my, our oldest child was born. She's now 24 years old. And she and her sisters have grown up in Colorado, believing that uh, uh, there was nothing that the Congress would do in the wake of, of that shooting 24 years ago to, to deal with this. And since then, Colorado has had tragedy after tragedy. In 2012, a gunman killed 12 people at a movie theater in Aurora. In 2021, uh, we had the King Super shooting. And, in Boulder that killed 10 people. Just over a year ago, a shooter killed five people at Club Q, at LGBTQ club in Colorado Springs. We just had the year anniversary of that event. And in every one of these mass shootings, the gunmen used weapons of war with the sole purpose of killing as many human beings as possible. And nobody has suffered more from this epidemic than our children, who have had to grow up fearful uh, of, of going to school in America. You can see it if you're a parent sitting on your couch when the television comes on and there's yet another mass shooting and the kids are sitting there wondering if they're going to be next when they go to school the next day. I'm embarrassed to say this. Everybody in this room should be embarrassed to say this, that guns are the leading cause of death of children in America. That didn't used to be true. There used to be car accidents, I think, and maybe cancer. Today, it is gun deaths. And I want to thank the students who are here, the Students Demand Action, for what you're doing, for what you've done in Colorado and all around this country to raise the voices of the next generation and listening to your mom's demand action. I know, because you're listening to your moms, and that's important. <laughs> But, but I know you are mystified at our inability to deal with this. And we are the only country in the world 
where the leading cause of death of children is guns. And they're fighting for a better future, and I think Senator Heinrich's legislation is going to put us in sight of that better sh future. And it can't come soon enough. The United States set the record for the most mass shootings, 38 in a single year this year in over 15 years. The American people have a real expectation that we are going to protect them from gun violence while respecting the rights of responsible gun owners. That's what the Go Safe Act does. It is a common sense, well-crafted proposal to keep weapons of war out of the hands of the wrong people. The weapons this bill addresses are designed to kill with brutal efficiency. They can eviscerate multiple people in seconds, snatch human lives away in seconds. And instead of regulating firearms based on their cosmetic features, which can be circumvented easily, this bill regulates them based on their internal mechanics, the very operating systems that make these weapons inherently dangerous. It exempts firearms with an established use for legitimate self-defense purposes and firearms used for hunting, an important part of Colorado's heritage and outdoor recreation economy. In Colorado, a western state like Martin's and, and like Mark's, we've been able, we have been able to enact meaningful gun reforms in that western state. After the massacre in Columbine, we closed the gun show loophole. They, Congress still has not closed. After the tragedy in Aurora, we strengthened our background checks. In the wake of the shooting at Club Q, we raised the age to purchase a firearm from 1820 to 21. If we can make progress, that's why we're here today, in a western state like Colorado where people are demanding action to end gun violence. Democrats, unaffiliated voters, and Republicans, and most important of all, our children, the next generation, I think we can do it here. Thank you, Senator Heinrich, for your leadership. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for uh, being here today. And Martin and Michael, thank you uh, for your partnership on this, and thank you for your leadership on this. Um, let me start by saying that I'm a gun owner and I'm a combat veteran. But also, this issue is very personal to me. Uh, my wife, Gabby Giffords, was shot and nearly killed about a dozen years ago while meeting with her constituents at a Safeway grocery store in Tucson, Arizona. I'm one of those uh, unfor unfortunate, unfortunate individuals in our country who is a spouse or a parent who has to receive that phone call to say, in my case, that my wife's been shot and later actually learn that she had been killed for 30 minutes. Ultimately, and thankfully, uh, that wasn't accurate. Uh, I know the damage a firearm can do, whether it's on the battlefield or at a neighborhood grocery store. And I understand the worry that parents have especially moms who have to send their kids to school every single day and worry about what comes next. I have a two-year-old granddaughter. She's already been through her first school lockdown. Now it was when she was about one and a half. I don't think she's going to remember it. But most kids here, young adults, this is what they've experienced their entire lives growing up. Drills for mass shooting, and in a lot of cases, you know, real lockdowns. And like Michael said, like Senator Bennett said, you know, we're like no other country in the world, you know, on this issue, uh, where kids die from gun violence at a higher rate than anything else. The Go Safe Act is a renewed effort on this issue to tackle this gun violence epidemic in our country. And it is an epidemic. And this addresses the deadliest semi-automatic rifles that are on the market today, the ones that we see used over and over again in mass shootings, time and time again, and also the high capacity magazines, and the modifications to these weapons, like bump stocks that make them even deadlier. 
But it does this while protecting the rights of responsible gun owners and accepting firearms that are more, more commonly used for self-defense and hunting, target shooting. Now, my colleagues and I are all from Western states that have a tradition of gun ownership, responsible gun ownership. And that is key and has been key to shaping this proposal. No single law is going to stop every shooting. We know that. But the level of gun violence in our country is unacceptable, and it has been for too many decades. And there is absolutely more we can do to make communities safer from gun violence. In the example of where Gabby was shot, you know, January 8th of 2011, guy shows up with a 9mm pistol and two high-capacity magazines. Each magazine held over 30 rounds. Every bullet he shot out of the first magazine hit a person, 32 or 33 rounds, every one. This only ended when he tried to reload. He dropped the second high-capacity magazine, and it gave some time for uh, a woman named Patricia Mace to grab the magazine and two other individuals to tackle him. If that was not a high-capacity magazine, if that was a typical magazine for a 9-millimeter handgun, you would have had fewer people shot and fewer people killed most likely. You know, regulating these weapons and these magazines, it's just common sense. And it's the thing that's going to help reduce these mass shootings. We know that. The data supports that. In my time in the Senate, I've been focused on finding these common sense solutions. And we can and we must act to make American communities safer without falling into the partisan rhetoric that we all too often hear on this issue, the rhetoric that stops us from making progress. You know, our country has experienced mass shooting after mass shooting, and it's past time that we look for fresh approaches, like the Go Safe Act, to protect Arizona families and kids, and families and kids in New Mexico and Colorado, and in all other 47 states and territories of this country to protect them from the most dangerous weapons and to make sure that those moms and dads don't have to worry about sending their kid off to school. So thank you and let's get this done. Thank you Senator Kelly. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a pattern here to the original co-sponsors of this legislation. Uh, we all come from states that have a long-term proud history of responsible gun ownership. And we all recognize that that is not what we see too often in our own communities. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, someone from my home state, uh, Miranda Viscali, who has led uh, New Mexicans to prevent gun violence and has really changed this debate in my state in a more positive way. And I think we can all learn from those efforts. Miranda. Senator Heinrich, thank you for your leadership. It is an honor to stand together again with this growing chorus of voices who refuse to abdicate our children's right to safety and survival so that the corporate gun lobby can continue selling military-grade weapons in our communities. Every week, every week, as the Senator previously said, when another mass shooting happens in our great country, Americans beg for Washington to do something. We write, we call, we testify at committee hearings, we meet repeatedly with our elected officials. When children are tortured with assault weapons, or mowed down in classrooms, or bodies obliterated in outdoor concerts, we organize marches, we stage rallies, we hold vigils begging Washington to get these weapons of war out of our communities. The majority of the work that we do at New Mexicans to, pre to prevent gun violence is with our youth, every day with our youth. And we can tell you from firsthand experience that they are frightened, they are confused, they are deeply stressed because they don't understand why we as adults in our community are doing so little to keep them safe. 
But today, thanks to this leadership, and this leadership and the courage and the tenacity of Senator Heinrich, Senator King, and co-sponsor Senator Kelly and Senator Barrett, Bennett, we are taking an important step to remove weapons of war from our civilian population, weapons that never belonged on our streets in the first place. And thanks to this leadership and the work of so many others, including those gathered today here in this room, we are filled with the hope that Washington can finally do something. We strongly believe that the Go Safe Act can be a watershed moment in the movement for a return to bipartisan, sane gun violence prevention laws. Thank you very much. I think it's safe to say that uh, there are two groups that have probably moved public opinion on these issues more than any others. And I would say that that's students and moms. And uh, our next speaker is Angela Farrell Zabala, the Executive Director of Moms Demand Action. Get your name right. Yes, you did. Oh. You got my name right. <laughs> thank you so much, Senators. Really proud to stand alongside you today. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. As stated, my name is Angela Farrell Zabala, and I am the Executive Director of Moms Demand Action. Together with Students Demand Action in Every Town for Gun Safety, we are the largest grassroots gun violence prevention organization in the country. Today marks a pivotal moment in our fight to save lives. I'm proud to stand here in support of the Go Safe Act, a groundbreaking bill that will help keep weapons of war out of our communities and prevent the kind of senseless mass shootings we've seen over and over again. El Paso, Uvalde, Las Vegas, Parkland, Sandy Hook, and just weeks ago, Lewiston, Maine. Communities that were shattered by violence that was made possible by assault-style rifles designed to kill as many people as possible as quickly as possible. But it doesn't have to be like this. The Go Safe Act offers an innovative approach to regulating weapons capable of inflicting catastrophic destruction in the blink of an eye. This isn't about taking away rights. It's about saving lives. These military-style weapons are designed for the battlefield. They have no place on our streets. The Go Safe Act is a common sense measure that respects the Second Amendment while prioritizing public safety. We know that the majority of Americans support this kind of common sense legislation. Senators Heinrich, King, Kelly, and Bennett have acted with courage. It's time for their colleagues to join them in supporting this bill. We can't afford to wait until the next tragedy and another community being devastated by someone armed with an AR-15. And the pressure isn't just on Congress. We're looking to state governments from New Mexico to Colorado, Rhode Island, up to Vermont and to Maine to follow the Senator's leadership and use this innovative approach to keep these deadly weapons out of their communities. Today, let's send a powerful message that this, the safety of our communities and this bill in particular, this is non-negotiable and that families matter more than the gun industry's bottom line. We owe it to our children, we owe it to our families and all those affected by gun violence to take this powerful step towards a safer future. Thank you so much. Thank you. As I said, uh, students and unfortunately some young people who are not quite as young as when they went through all of this have really changed this debate. Uh, our next speaker has been an incredibly uh, articulate voice for sanity, uh, has uh, inspired uh, people like my own son to mar march on the Capitol here. So we're going to hear from Alea Eastman. Six and a half minutes. That's all it took. Six and a half minutes for my classroom to become a war zone. To hear the windows and our computers shattering and to see my classmates slaughtered in front of me. Six and a half minutes is all it took to kill 14 of my classmates and three school administrators 
and injure another 17. Six and a half minutes and 150 rounds of ammunition. My name is Alea Eastman. I am a youth organizer and co-founder of Brady's Team Enough. Like too many Americans, I am also a survivor of gun violence. In 2018, I survived the deadliest high school shooting in American history. Using a weapon built for the, bat built for the battlefield, a gunman attacked my high school, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. At the age of 16, an age too young to even be allowed in a war, I was living through one in my classroom. I'm only allowed alive today because of Nicholas Dorette, who in death protected me as bullets rained down upon us at an uncomprehensible speed. Semi-automatic rifles with large capacity magazines have no place in our communities. And the longer we wait to pass some common sense regulations, the closer we are to the next mass shooting. I am grateful for Senators Heinrich, King, Kelly, and Bennett for introducing the Go Safe Act to pre prevent anyone else from living through what I and many others have endured. For all of my classmates who were senselessly murdered, for all of the kids who live in fear that they will be gunned down in their classrooms, at the mall, at the movies, or their place of worship, and for the silenced black and brown voices that are forced to deal with this violence every day, I hope that we can see politicians from both sides of the aisle join together and say enough is enough and pass the Go Safe Act. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. We have time for uh, for questions. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Well, I talked to the, uh, your Republican colleagues about this issue. A lot of times they mention uh, solutions like hardening schools or you know making sure that uh, these venues, whether it's a bowling alley or a church, has you know armed security. What's your message to those colleagues? What's your message to folks who? It's the guns, and it's specifically these kinds of guns. And I think it's interesting that we don't hear from, um, from the students in those schools saying what we really need is just to harden the schools. I think that says a lot. Superintendent. Sure, I'll answer that too. Um, I've heard people say after a mass shooting that that's the price of freedom. You know, and what we have to understand about this is the freedoms that our young people are giving up every single day they walk across the threshold of their school, terrified of what's going to happen to them. And I think that's what we're standing up for today is, is the freedom for young people not to have to live their lives that way. And we have an obligation to them. We have a responsibility to them. And that's what we're here to do today. these folks and and the reality that um, more and more people in states of every political stripe are calling for this that is changing the the conversation we don't have any Republican co-sponsors yet but we're speaking with Republicans we're sharing the bill we're open to their feedback and unfortunately we've all gone through this in our states and that has the power to um, open doors that are closed today. And if you look back at Uvalde, um, a month before Uvalde, I, that bill was not possible. 